And he said to another, follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, let the dead bury their dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Really powerful, powerful gospel reading tonight. Just like, just like, I uh, love the, the beautiful, like, power that Jesus has in his call to us, right? Follow me. And just like how simple it is, too, when he calls people to follow him. He doesn't give a long speech explaining to, you know, his, his disciples, right, the reasons why they should follow him over someone else. He doesn't tell them what their life is going to look like if they follow him, what, you know, what's going to happen to them and stuff. And he doesn't promise them any earthly goods like wealth, pleasure, or power. He simply offers two words, follow me, follow me. And I don't know if you guys have seen the, the Chosen series or not, but I think that's what they, they do a really good job of, of showing Jesus, just like pretty much to everyone he encounters, he just says, follow me. And it's interesting to see how people respond to those two words. And while he, you know, he uttered those two words to each of his followers 2,000 years ago, to this day, he offers us those same words, follow me. And like the people in this gospel passage, I'm pretty sure you and I are not good at responding to this call with our whole heart. As human beings, one thing we love is excuses, and we also love overcomplicating things. So Jesus gives this beautiful, beautifully simple uh, command, right? Follow me. And what do we, how do we reply to him? Instead of saying, yes, Lord, I'm going to follow you wherever you go, what we often do is we we give him a bunch of terms and conditions, right? Like, you know, like when you're, when you're online and you're about to like register for like a GPS and then you have to click on, you have to read through all these terms and conditions and then you gotta say, yes, I've read them and then we move on. Do you guys, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Nobody reads those terms and conditions, but like we all just like scroll through them really quick. But like for us, like when, with our relationship with the Lord, um, it's like, that's what we do. It's like the Lord says, follow me. And you're like, Lord, one second, let me type up pages and pages of like terms and conditions that I can like figure a way to follow you in the way that I want, I want to do it. You know what I mean? Like, Lord, just like hold still and let me punch this up. It's so like, what does that look like? What are, our, what are our terms and conditions like? Uh, for example, we might say like, hey, Lord, I will follow you, you know, if I get to live my life exactly as it is. And if I don't have to change anything, then I'll follow you. Right? We give the Lord like a bunch of these ifs. Or we could say, like, I'll follow you, Lord, if I get to hang on to all my possessions and just, like, keep accumulating more, then I'll follow you. Or maybe we're just like, Lord, I'm going to follow you if I can only follow the teachings of the church that make me comfortable. Then I'm going to follow you. It's like we give them, like, page after page of, like, ifs, right? And just, like, conditions of following the Lord instead of just saying, Lord, I'm going to go all in for you. My dear friends in Christ, Instead of going all in for the Lord, right, falling in love with God and his church, living by his teachings in their entirety, and becoming people of heroic prayer, what we often do is we pick when we're going to follow him. So we're like, Lord, this is the plan that I want you to have for me. We tell him exactly who we're going to show love and charity to, right? Not everybody, but only those who I want to choose. And then we tell him what commandments and teachings that we're going to follow, we love picking and choosing like crazy. Like, that's just us. Like, we love being picky and choosy. And what the Lord doesn't want, right? He doesn't want that of us. He doesn't want us to be selective, picky, and lukewarm disciples who just cherry pick whatever we want. Jesus wants us to drop everything and straight up follow him. Imitating Elisha in the first reading today. All right, look again at Elisha, this beautiful prophet. We find him tilling up the field with his 12 yoke of oxen. And what that means, already he's got 12 yoke, it means he's a really rich and wealthy man. Like he's got a lot going for him. And then suddenly this guy, Elijah, approaches him and throws his cloak over him, calling him to succeed him. And there's a good chance that Elisha had never met Elijah in his life. But since this call came from God, what Elisha does is he straight up follows him. And what I find super interesting about this is instead of just dropping his oxen and his equipment and stuff like that, instead of, I'm just going to like leave this here for the next guy. What he does is super interesting. He slaughters all of them, burns up his farming equipment, and then just like feeds people and then goes so that he has nothing to turn back on. What Alicia does really, really well here is he doesn't set up terms and conditions in following the Lord. 
he just gets rid of everything. And he says, Lord, you're worth it. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to go all in for you. I don't want to have this to fall back on, right? I want to go all in for you. And I want to lay down my entire livelihood to follow you and to follow your will in my life. Right? At the prompting of God, he offered up his entire livelihood for God and God alone. My dear friends in Christ, Jesus is calling you and I to follow him in the same way, plain and simple. Right? He who calls us is unlike anybody else. Jesus is not some random teacher or an ancient prophet. Rather, Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the king and center of all hearts, and he wants us to go all in for him. Right? He's not a way, but the way, the truth, and the life. Like, I think that's such a huge temptation in our culture today. To say, like, like, Jesus is one option out of, like, a ton of different, a smorgasbord of options. But it's like, no, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he wants us to follow him. Jesus is the burning furnace of charity who went all in for us and who is begging us to go all in for him. Uh, what I want to do, how I want to end this homily is, is uh, by quoting Pope St. John Paul II, because he does a, it's like a masterful job here of summarizing the Christian life and what it looks like to follow Jesus, right? right? The Lord, the Savior, everything. And so I just want to read this uh, quote. This is John Paul II. He said, It is Jesus that you seek when you dream of happiness. He is waiting for you when nothing else you find satisfies you. He is the beauty to which you are so attracted. It is he who provoked you with that thirst for fullness that will not let you settle for compromise. It is he who urges you to shed the masks of a false life. It is he who reads in your heart your most genuine choices, the choices that others try to stifle. It is Jesus who stirs in you the desire to do something great with your lives, the will to follow you to follow an ideal, the refusal to allow yourselves to be ground down by mediocrity, the courage to commit yourselves humbly and patiently to improving yourselves in society, making the world more human and more fraternal. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. And maybe you're thinking right now, you're like, okay, this is like a really super inspiring homily for a young person, but I'm like retired, living the dream, doing whatever retired people do, I have no idea. I was told in the seminary to never even utter the R word because retirement may never happen for priests, I don't know. But maybe you're, maybe you're in this spot. You too have a mission. You too are called to follow Jesus who's the way, the truth, and the life. Right, again, to go all in for him. None of us are ever done following Christ until we die, right? To the end, right? Jesus who loved us unto death is calling us to do the same. It's so like if you're a grandparent, like maybe your mission in life is to pray for your kids, your grandkids. Maybe it's to just offer up, you know, your life for, for somebody who can't pray for themselves. Like whatever it is, like you have a mission and the Lord's giving it to you, right? And just trust that, right? Trust that Jesus has a plan and that he wants only what is best for you and could not desire anything else. Jesus is never going to say, follow me and set you up for disaster, when Jesus says, follow me, he knows your heart perfectly and he loves you immensely and he has a plan for you. And so the only re re like real response to give Jesus when he says, follow me, and he does, is to, is to pray these words in this divine mercy image and to keep them super close to your heart every day. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. I have no idea where you're leading me, but I know that you desire what is best for me. So today at this Mass, let's ask the Lord for this beautiful grace and desire uh, to put our hands to the plow, to follow him, and to never look back.